Dear listeners, welcome to Out of Office. Welcome, dear listeners, to and out of office. My name is Marcos, and with me is Chef Allen. What's up, everyone? It's your, it's your good friend, Allen. <laughs> Thank you for having me back on, Marcos. What's going on, bro? And even you know, and especially with this one being on an out of, on out of office, works it hard. Um, you know, Allen over here. Testing out his his chef skills. Obviously, you know, eating down. The grind never stops. What do you think? What are you having for tonight? Yeah, no, chowing down is right, bro. Like, I had to whip something up real quick because I was hungry. Not trying to go to sleep on an empty stomach. But um, nothing too crazy. Uh, I did a a bit of uh, fettuccine alfredo with, uh, what's it called, Uh, with chicken. On the side, seared chicken marinated in garlic, onion, lemon juice, olive oil, a uh, bit of mezcal, and uh, Damn. some nice ingredients, some nice dry ingredients, and then made some garlic bread. Yeah, something light, bro, you know. My boy made garlic bread. <laughs> Had to, bro. Had to have it with the, with the pasta, bro. And then he says, had the had the chicken and some mezcal on the side. I'm like, okay. Well, okay. I marinated it. At least you're not so driving today. It was good. No, no, you're no, not no, driving? no. No driving, sir. No driving. Just eating. Just good, clean fun with the food. Driving down the streets of good food of, uh, you know. <laughs> Flavor Town. Uh, <laughs> Flavor Town. There you go. You oh, took man. the word shit out of my mouth. Some guy, guy Fieri, Flavor Town. <laughs> there we go. You no believe the flavor here. Big facts, bro. So what about and, you, um, bro? Not much, not much over here. Um, doing, um, you know, like in the last episode, I, I'm scheduling this other stuff for, for you know, the shop stuff, and yes, yes, it's pretty, very it's good. pretty fun. Congratulations again. again. I'm very happy. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you. But yeah, enough about me. Uh, let's talk what about, about, me? about <laughs> and, uh, nah. <laughs> let's talk about like uh, the things you bought in the in Amazon. Like we we were you were oh, we were gonna yeah, jump on that, bro. Standing desk, something I really needed, so I got that. <clears throat> I got a great deal. It was about like uh, I want to say like 90, 90 something dollars, all with taxes and everything included. Um, I also got a uh, stand for my television, which was really good. Um, I, I had to get that so I, I'm able to move it around my room so I can actually clean behind and uh, helps with the, at least for me, it helps with the cleaning aspect of it, keeping it dust free. Um, besides that, uh, let's see, I got a, um, uh, a Surface Pro, a Surface Pro 9 and a Corsair one terabyte SSD to go along with that. Um, Cause uh, I, I need to upgrade my my setup in order for me to do more of these recordings with you guys. Um, so I thought it was just the uh, right time uh, to do that. Um, other than that, I think everything else was pretty much, I, I guess just con- like uh, consumer based like, uh, things i can eat and drink like coconut water uh seltzer water um i actually got bubbly this time so they're they, they were on sale um and they were really good i'm actually drinking some right now um nice yes 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 and i got uh, some gatorades because it's been crazy hot with crazy amount of um humidity uh, what else? And I also got Nerds Rope because it was on sale for like 13 bucks. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's what I, I'm thinking. Like, what else I got? I think that, that's pretty much it. But it was really good. It was really good. What, what about you? Did, were you able or were you enticed to get anything? Oh, yeah. Or did you get um, anything? There was, there was a link that you shared me. Right. Uh, regarding the, like, that some, some stuff and one of them caught my attention it was the whatchamacallit the the pillow or whenever I'm on the road 
and uh i was able to do like a hopefully no promo for for the lts in espanol uh while i was heading out on the um, i was literally able to field test it you know this past week and it, it's it was good no complaints asked no complaints over here and um uh, while on the road obviously i did a little segment recorded a little bit segment in span in spanish with the family and uh hopefully you know i'll also post that later on that on that uh channel for all all you listeners that listen to this in spanish that are interested in that you know yes shout I was out to the in espanol Absolutely. yeah we haven't forgotten about you guys we haven't Absolutely forgotten about you. uh what else um i was able to do that i was able to buy some uh you know some again uh cookies uh a lot of like good price cookies but like they, they're like thin chocolate chip cookies called tates um i bought a couple of those that were a good price i i have a I also like a little sweet tooth so i'm guilty of that what else i bought are um, we all aren't we all <laughs> that's true that's true okay uh, and the tates one is it's the one in the green package right yes yes yo those are really good bro i'm surprised that i admit the you know this guy andrew has a collaborated with those or something like that i bring those <laughs> cookie sales up you know what i mean no yeah it's it's a funny little coinky dink <laughs> I, i'm surprised somebody hasn't lost thrown a loss or a copyright or something on on well, each other it's a name yeah because it's a name i think they, they have a lot, a lot more leeway i guess yeah and then what what branch if you're it, they're not like um infringing on each other's like uh lane if you will in simpler terms right what else what else the, uh, that one um i also i was debating because at work i'm able to have contact with the house new york salsa uh new york salsa water but then i also was able to try out the what's this other one uh green green bottle french name with a p mm, the Perrier. Okay. there you go yeah that one i'm like original salsa flavorless versus the Perrier also but the branding according to the to to um uh, to perrier it's available um, it was or is available it, it was a good price i bought a couple boxes of those um not bad really really happy uh what else i don't i was able to um i bought like a little stand almost not a tv not a tv stand or just a little thing an accessory for my computer and like laptop for my personal comfort um what else that um i think it was that one the, the big purchase was the pe one of the pillow things from from the video you shared some vitamins cookies water some bubbly i guess and no oh, what you call it um this uh, not adapter stand i guess like that raises the computer like in a cleaner way i'm um, like a uh, yeah, stand basically and um I think that was it not that week like not the this past week um the pillow came i think that's the latest thing that came very happy very happy with my with my purchase mm -hmm. that's good to know bro were you able to get everything in one go or did you spread out the the shipping uh the water the cookies okay. the water and the cookie came together i guess you know collaborating since amazon is with whole foods that came in first then came in the stand with uh with the vitamin no the vitamins also came in with the water and uh the stand came alone and the pillow came in like that um yeah the neck pillow came in last and that came in like later earlier like in the past week that we just had what else um and i think that was it like it came in three big pack three big like the different deliveries but yeah that that was the amazon adventures that i had uh with amazon day if you will what else say in um in, were you able to mm -hmm. snag any deals from other other uh, stores or anything online stores because i, I know a lot of places kind of wanted to compete against amazon so they kind of ran their own uh sales on the or, same day yeah no even 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 worse the whole week so they could actually like beat them Longer. before yeah and after so just in case so i mean that i mean no, Target, no shame walmart yeah. costco a lot of places did the 
the, that 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 very uh, thing to try to compete with them. So that was interesting. Yeah, but no, I, I was only uh, for the vitamin situation. It was easier to get it there. The Perrier, uh, I I tried it because um there were some at work, but the, like little two or three samples at like competitors and uh and that and their distributor. Uh, with my boss and I you know oh they brought samples okay and uh, from there we haven't you know I found them for my own price for my own personal usage at home on Amazon it was a good price no complaints on that one um and the vitamins I heard GNC was having its own deals but I was like I want to keep it through the Amazon it was it was a convenience I'm guilty of that it, versus um setting up an account on GNC or its competitors like GNC also has lost a lot of reputation like it's been in on the news for not many good things so I've been trying to stay out of that one and at the same time Amazon has also been on the on the on the bad side that oh it doesn't have reputable sources but I'm still like trying to stay with Amazon I don't know why I mean, it's, it's like I chose my devil and I made my bed, if you will, mm. with Amazon. Yeah, but <clears throat> I guess every company has their pros and cons, right? Oh, oh, I like it. I like it. How come not pros and cons? Yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. Uh, uh, what do you think about like my um? There was something on the news at work, and my uh, I f um I forgot the subject, but the. <laughs> thing that I pulled from it and that, that I, I want to ask you and maybe the listeners do you know what gentrification is? Uh, I kind of have a rough idea but would you be able to define it for me? Basically gentrification is uh, in the urban environment or specifically in the neighborhood as an example that since it's um, an influx of a new demographic of people that are basically more economically stable or more affluently economically that are basically raising the the living standards or the economic standing of the neighborhood and with that it, um, more shops come in because they're able to spend more money there or more different different uh, stuff that make uh, job opportunities and different culture mending comes to this neighborhood but with the side effect the, the cons if you will is that things become more expensive and the people that aren't as economically affluent are more or less driven out making the one losing its older persona the neighborhood to lose its older persona and gain another one but at the same time it's more or less kicking out people with lesser economic uh, ability but at the same time giving uh, more job uh, different different and maybe even more but in different areas of job opportunities and then and, you know it's a big ethics and also economics quandary in urban and urbanization of different reurbanization of different neighborhoods like the image of of the of the place changes is it for good is it is the older uh culture leaving bad what's like it's the jury still out to that concept right now in different areas like in new york city always like the cities are the first one that you can notice this but now in urban um suburban areas this is happening as well <laughs> Nah, bro. I, I totally understand where, you, where I guess the, the the aspect of it, people can see it as a negative thing and other people might see it as a really good thing, especially people that are, I guess, owners of properties uh, <clears throat> that actually own the properties. And like, I, I, I guess I could see both sides of the, of the coin. But um, I, I don't... <sighs> I mean, because I'm, I don't know if I, I've lived through anything like that, that I can say, oh, um, it's a problem. I'm pretty sure it might be a problem for, for a lot of other people out there. But I think that also has to do with um, the lack of, I guess, uh, how can I put it? Um, 
uh, I think the the that the local government is too involved, or maybe the federal government is too involved in all the wrong ways. And instead of helping, they're hurting. And it could po- probably also possibly be the the fact that the actual owners of buildings or homes, um, kind of the owners, yeah, yeah, they probably like all kind of get get on the same page of um, charging uh, relatively the same price for properties or for apartments or what have you, and they kind of monopolize that that section so whether it's uh whether the economy is going well or not going well they they kind of have like that agreement that they're not they're either going to raise or not raise the rent and um it's not it doesn't look good for people that rent places and i think also uh the bigger problem there is a lot of people want to go into these urban areas not only people that are, I guess you could say that are living paycheck to paycheck, but also people that want to be in the city and they want to be close to places. And I'll just take as an example, like New York City, right? So you mm-hmm. have all the five boroughs and you have places that are in Manhattan proper and um, it's like a Harlem or something like that, where that might be the case where they're trying to push out the residents and buy up uh, properties and you know zhuzh them up if you will and charge a pretty penny and the only people that can afford such places are people that are Got making the money basically yeah, yeah. are making a hundred thousand uh, like not even I'm sorry not even a hundred thousand I apologize like maybe like 600,000 or more, uh, maybe half a million or more than a million to try to, you know, pay for these apartments because it's really crazy. Like the boxes that they offer and the money they charge for said box. <laughs> like like uh, the going rate for like a one room apartment basically with like a shared bathroom, all those things are like at least over two, almost three grand easily, over three grand. Oh yeah, um, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. just a contract for two years. Yeah, and that sucks, bro. And and a lot of these places that I guess people are moving into barely have the bare minimum. It's pretty like ragged. It needs repairs. To be quite honest, it needs to get demolished and remade from the bottom up. But because no because it, it almost seems like no one's complaining enough <laughs> and i know that's a shock but i'm pretty sure there's people that complain about it but there's no real incentive for homeowners or property owners to actually do that because it's the only game in town they they see themselves that's the la- the o- the only coca-cola bottle in the, de- in the desert and there's no other game but them. so it's either you pick them or nothing so uh, again i i can see both sides of that so i'm pretty sure there's property owners that are aren't just you know crazy pieces of poop that are trying to do right by the you know their their tenants but i mean again we only hear um the bad side because that's what sells on, on in the news you know, like, you rarely hear about yeah. the, the the property owner that you know helped the tenant. You know, in a when they were in a sticky situation, it's like that's not really, I guess, thought provoking when it comes to news. So they all always look for it doesn't sell mishaps, right? Exactly. So again, um, that's how I look at it. Again, I I can't really speak too much upon that particular uh, situation just because, like, I. Yeah, I live in New York, but I don't see it in that same light as people that are affected by it because I'm not in that situation. I don't live around that situation per se to, to kind of like, you know, observe it and, and have a proper, I guess, stance upon it or about it because I know there's two sides to every every argument. So, um, yeah, that, that's what I think. What about you, Marcos? <laughs> I feel like it's like a hundred sided dice. If anything, there's always more than one. There's always going to be another thing, another thing. 
I'm being like simplistic at saying it's a dice or anything, but life always continues. Like we can only do as much as a as a as a property owner, as a rent, like somebody that rents, if you will. I can imagine them like you know, thus. How do you say it in English? Get to Fernando los dedos. You're always like stressing, if you will, um, to make sure that it's um, that you're let la- la- that the people you're renting to are paying their checks because you got to pay checks somewhere else too. And then, you know, if they, uh, are, oh, I guess in some areas, like, um, oh, for example, over here, over here where, over here where I live or, or right next door to my brother, right? Um, they were saying like, yeah, like, um, they're happy that they had a new elevator put and it took like eight weeks, yeah, eight weeks to have a new elevator set. But then there's always something else breaking. Like, um, they remember like every other month or every three months, almost like on clockwork. Oh, it got certified. It got certified. It got certified. Like, no, no, no. This, this is too much. And that's when the new elevator came in. Okay, good. No issues to report. And then there's always something else breaking. Uh, what was it last week? Um, they had to shut the water in the middle of the day, obviously, when people are at work, outside, uh, working. Um, that they're gonna shut it for two or three hours or four, I think, to ha- do emergency repairs in the main water system in the out in the um, on the building. And so they were they gave out a notice in the morning, right? They were gonna close it that day, and that to me that I pay attention to that. And versus I don't know other people that are living or working at home need that water and are not you know hopefully um, are in the in the notification at work they they can know and can work accordingly or it didn't affect me because i was outside by the point that I, um this notification came out like around at seven or eight in the morning i was already getting i was already signing in you know punching and clocking in for work so it was it wasn't an issue for me by the time i went back and uh, the situation hopefully had already been solved but this, that as a as a as a renter it's something that I'm, I'm always like trying to look out for like okay is the elevator up to date is um is a pipe gonna burst is there any other issue so as a renter as a person that rents uh where they live versus uh a person that rents two people a landlord I'm, I'm trying to say um what's what's their situation um i just um you know talking with the superintendent um you can hear like oh i gotta do this i gotta do that i gotta do this like um and you know his uh his co-worker always in the hustle there's i mean it is their job obviously but at the same time i can empathy with them and understand that they're always on the grind said that trying to make it a better man hopefully you know you, I, I hope that you know they're grinding so that the you the us the renters the renters can be living better because you know that's what we pay for hopefully that's what i think about and you know we treat them with the proper respect and thank you for your for your hard work and everything um but as the person that has to pay the check so that i can still be renting in that place i hopefully expect there to be a certain standards and like you're saying there's a lot of high prices for renting and like come on please keep it up to date and you know that's what i'm always keeping at me and in my mind and trying to keep an, an observational eye if you will in in the building in my building and you know that's why i find gentrification in itself like so since there's different businesses coming around the, the property value of different things go up besides inf- with the excluding inflation because that's also a factor that prices are already going up because of the world that's going on we're living in but just with the specific situation of gentrification in in prices of living it's getting up there but in the in the prices of of a different variety of things it's always exciting as me living living through it if you will it's always exciting in that side but there's always the other side of me having to pay more for those stuff and as a as a as a shop worker i understand prices I understand why they're going up, how they're harder even for the shop workers to acquire those products. And like my place is trying to keep it competitive and it always irks me as a little shopper. Like, like that's one of my pet peeves. Oh, it's so expensive. 
And I'm like, yeah, you should imagine how much it costs to get that there. And you know, me living through it, something that it, like, I'm not gonna blame it, but I can observe it, that it's going on and I don't have any solution for it. It's just like, I'm living through it and I'm trying to make the best of it in, in my own little bubble. Right, right. No, but Marcos, like, and I know I've heard arguments before about this, and it's like, and it might sound kind of like mean to a certain extent, or maybe just like, um, I guess, uh, I don't know how I, I could describe it, but like, I guess people being, people see, see it as being mean or, uh, not not self aware of, of the situation or whatever the case is, right? So they they look at it and say, well, you have two options here. If you're if you're going through a situation where you might possibly uh, be in a financial bind because of whatever the the circumstance you're in or the reasons you're in, it. Um, uh, I hear a lot of people that are in the financial space uh, usually kind of like explain it this way, where either you figure out a way to make yourself more valuable and make more money or create or be valuable enough where more money is is given to you because of that said value or you figure out a way to go through all of your your expenditures and cut out the stuff that are wants and not needs um maybe you're indulging in, in, in stuff that maybe is not the primary thing it's more like the secondary thing and uh, maybe cutting that out of your budget in order for you to actually have enough for everything that is a need and not a want would probably help in, in, in a lot of ways and if you couple both of those two you know cutting out the stuff that are secondary things and um, figuring out how to be more valuable, valuable and make more money, uh, it would probably get you out that bind where you might find yourself where it's like, yeah, it seems unfair, but at the same time, there is a remedy. It just so happens that you have to work for it in order for it to, you know, to happen for you. Um, and again, a lot of people might say, oh, that's so inconsiderate that's kind of mean or it is mean whatever the case is but again it's like we're all dealt a certain hand and i'm not going to say some people are 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 dealt i mean there's 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 what some might call the lucky the lucky sperm club (laughs) where you're just born into money and obviously that's not everyone but that doesn't mean that you're not able to you're you're not able to get yourself to a, a position where you you might be the one being uh, you might be the one collecting a million dollars because of the value that you bring to the market for whatever uh, business that is, or you create something that you know makes you ultra wealthy. And I think that's a good thing where you're you have uh, avenues or opportunities that you probably or most likely don't have in other countries living in the U.S. that you are able to do it regardless of, you know, whatever hiccups you might think you have. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah no and, doubt about um, that. And you're able to, to accomplish a lot. But I, I guess what happens is that people like to dwell in those hiccups instead of actually looking for solutions. And instead of actually, you know, figuring out a way to get out from, get it out from the mud. Uh, they, you think they it's the quick speed of life? Yeah, they rather just wallow in the mud. And, and yeah, feel that's sorry like for the quick yeah. yeah, and and that really gets old real quick because it's like, you and you've probably seen it before, bro. It's like, especially in your in your situation where it's like you might ha- happen to see people on the side of the road right. or at the bodega that are asking the for house. money, asking for money, and oh, yeah, I gotta get milk for my kids, and it's like you know they're not, you know, gonna get milk for the kids. <laughs> they're probably gonna go squander that money for either you know alcohol or some sort of uh, uh, drug or substance. So it's like, 
yeah, you can be the, the person giving out some charity to them, but is that really helping them at, in any way, shape, or form? Now you could say, well, what can I do? Well, you could offer them, you know, food instead of, you know, money outright. You know, maybe you want to get them a cup of coffee. I don't see anything wrong with that. But just blatantly giving them money just because they're asking for it doesn't really make sense to me or it doesn't seem like it's actually helping anyone, especially them, short term or long term. Um, and and so how many hours you, were you working for that dollar? Is right, it worth right, you right. giving it away for zero? Uh, can that get your, <clears throat> uh, your, your time is worth money? Yeah, no, and and I would say yeah, the, that that part of it is is very is very natural to, to distinguish and understand. But I think also, um, if if we really think about it, it's like everybody, everyone has the same twenty four hours, right? Everyone has the same amount of time. Uh, it just so happens that some apply themselves in in such a way where, and, and this is obviously excluding the people that are you know. <laughs> that are drug dealers <laughs> that are you know quote entrepreneurs unquote, gangsters. And, yeah no no gangsters and people that obtain money in an illegal way right even if it's even if they call themselves entrepreneurs but they're really just crony capitalists not real capitalists but crony capitalists where they they cheat lie and steal to get their They're, they're themselves into a position of power where they can kind of like bully the little guy and or or try to sneak or scheme their way to millions right i'm not talking about those people those people are not you know genuine uh people that i would consider you know entrepreneurs or people that have actually legitimately got themselves in, in, in a better position i just see them as people that are that have uh drank the Kool-Aid, if you will, uh, of the lie that, you know, that you can literally lie, cheat, and steal uh, your way to, to victory or, or greatness, and it's not true. That, that, that never lasts. Um, I'm talking about the people that actually, you know, create businesses, create more value in the marketplace, that, um, that <clears throat> these people are the ones that are able to, you know, to figure out solutions for problems that we see around us and just going back to the to the point of um handing people money it's like we saw what happened when the government handed money helicopter money during the pandemic it really didn't get anyone in, in, in any way shape or form in a better place it kind of made them even more lazy to the point where they don't want to work at their jobs anymore because they're making more money you know staying at home having the government pay for them is that still going on or did it end I, um, from what I know, it, it stopped, but at, but the repercussions, the after effect is still going on where, um, people uh, just don't want to work. They, they, they rather, they rather live the YOLO life to a certain extent. And, uh, they're, and I'm guessing a lot of people are trying their hands at, at figuring out how to make easy money where, which, you know, we all kind of understand that there is no such thing as easy money. There's only you know how productive you can be in the 24 hours that are you're, you're giving get you're given and um how how valuable you really are to the marketplace and you know those are the things that i kind of take into consideration when and obviously it, it, i don't think there's nothing there's anything in, inherently wrong but by giving someone something but i think we have to be more particular of what we give because the solution isn't always giving someone money it, it might it might just so happen that giving the person an opportunity uh it is a lot better than giving them out of money outright or perhaps giving a person some food or uh, you know something to drink might be a, a whole lot better than just giving them money outright because sometimes as human beings when we don't know how to you know lead certain things or cope with certain things when we are given something without working for it or earning it we tend to squander it instead of put it into productive use and 
that's how I, I look at it. But um, like understanding the value of that dollar, if you will. Exactly. It's like a parent giving a kid, you know, money. Like go, they give him five dollars. Go to the store, get you know the things that I have to, the ingredients I have to uh, that I need to make breakfast or whatever the case is. Right. Kid comes back and he has a bag of chips, soda, and some bubble gum. And you're like, well, didn't I ask you to go get the ingredients for breakfast? Oh, that, is that what you were trying to tell me to do? Oh, and then you ask them, oh, where's the change? At least giving me the change back. Uh, what change? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, they squandered everything, every last penny. And you're like, dang. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when a person doesn't, you know, value or understand the value of what you know something that's something that's given to them when they don't work for it they're just given something they kind of they tend to squander it not value it not figuring out a way to multiply it they just figure out a way how to spend it as quick as possible and that's self-gratification a short-term gratification yeah oh yeah oh yeah that's the that yellow thing on. oh yeah but yeah bro that i mean again because i see things that way and again i'm i'm no i'm no billionaire or millionaire i'm barely no, I'm, I'm barely a thousandaire okay you're speaking uh, from your own experience well yeah like, exactly uh, like bro i don't know how many times like i go to work whatever work that may be that day and it's like i i see these unfortunate souls out there just wasting their time the limited time they have on this earth just squandering it the opportunities that you possibly had or have for you know quick gratification of you know having a beer or god forbid having drugs in their system it's it's, it's crazy it's like to me it's like this is is this the reason why you busted your ass so hard to get from one country to another just so you can squander the opportunity that you you've been given that to me is crazy that to me is absurd but again who am i to tell people this that or the fifth right i can only give uh some sort of some sort of um oh yeah sorry about that bro i do i understand um so yeah like uh people that that are given that that opportunity right that they squander it or or, or don't take it into consideration where it's like there's a lot of people that would kill or die for that that same opportunity that never really you know appreciated it and it's crazy to me because it's like dude now that you're here you have the opportunity to do something with it and not doing anything like come on that 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 to me is crazy but again i can't i can't give um some sort of uh a piece of advice or a word of encouragement if they don't ask for it and sometimes you giving people encouragement or a piece of advice without them asking is like you know it, those are the times that most likely not always but most likely uh, it'll fall on deaf on deaf ears because people sometimes are like, yeah, I don't want to hear that in this particular moment. I, I don't want to hear that at all. I'd rather hear you tell me that I'm, you know, I'm 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 a messed up person. Uh, you know, not give me um, money, but don't hassle me or try to lecture me. And that's again, that's crazy to me. Like uh, people would be so so arrogant that they don't want to even to take help. uh take the time to, to to look for help or if they do look for help but they want help their way <laughs> and that's crazy bro have you ever have you ever dealt with a person that is asking for help and then you try to help them but they're like no 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 i need you to help me this way this particular i need you to help me and usually it it, it comes to helping them uh, in a monetary sense it's like no no i don't need advice i don't need a sandwich i don't need a coffee i need you to give me some money can you do that for me if you can't then don't waste my time and it's like damn that's crazy like people are that arrogant or that self-absorbed or 
is in such a bad situation. But again, human nature when when we confuse uh, liberty with uh, just chaos. Yeah, that's how I look at it, bro. What is if freedom isn't so free? You gotta have um, some discipline in order to enjoy your freedom. Uh, I guess, I guess you could say. Um, in order to understand how free you are, you gotta like, you know, grind up, rise early, do your things, and then, you know, the piece of you completing in order for your continued, um, conf- at least the basic understand of um, the basics of living, you can enjoy going out for a weekend, going out for a drink and all those things with everything paid for already. Well, you know, I think, I think in, in, to some degree, yeah. But what happens a lot of times, I, I personally think that people just haven't traveled enough. Just haven't got gotten out, out of their bubble or out of their city or out of their town. Like, especially to, like, in our case, right? We've gone to Mexico. And we know for a fact that living over there isn't the same as living over here. Um, opportunities aren't the same as over here. Like, not to say that that place is bad or where our, where our parents or our forefathers have come from is a bad place, inherently bad. It just, it's not the place where you go for opportunity and growth to, I guess, in the sense of like what, what comparing it to where we are here um and that's no that's no you know slight or shade to uh, Mexico or from where our parents are from it just means that if given the choice to go to a place where you have the opportunity the liberty and the tools given to you to actually succeed you're going to take the place that is giving you all that instead of staying put in a place where you have to work, you know, five times, ten times as hard to even get a shot at opportunity in the first place. So, again, um, or at least think- like deep roots in, in something, you know, that like a family run thing for years. <laughs> Right, right. But again, I think it, it kind of it kind of goes over people's heads because they their only point of reference is living here. They've never they've probably never stepped out of the city or the town that they grew up in. They've never left the United States. They've never gone to you know Europe, Asia, uh, you know. Central or South America or Australia or somewhere else somewhere else that's not or attempt to save to go there well again I think I think the United States is big enough where you can go to 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 diverse places but again I think that that culture shock of you going to a place that's not the US is a lot more humbling that people that, that then people take it you know would make it out to be just because it's like you can see places or you can be in places where uh, across the street from one another you can see like the actual and I'm not going to pick up particular place but there, there might be places out there where you might might see a very distinct and drastic you know uh, change in one street over to another we're over here we're complaining about gentrification to a certain degree right where it's a nice place yeah but over in other countries that are not the united states you might see that in such a more grander scale where the haves and have not uh are so palpable so crazy that you are kind of left in awe because you see people that are dirt poor poverty and people that are in Lambos and Ferraris on the other across the, across the town, across town or something like that. And that to me is bananas that that type of situation plays out in other countries. And we're so short sighted that we can only see, you know, our, our, I guess, you know, shortcomings and, and can't 
see how great of a hand we've been dealt and we have the opportunity to grow it and be more but we just choose not to because we're lazy or because we want to make up weird type of um you know excuses no excuses excuses oh it's because you know it's it's because you know my parents or my grandparents or because it's because i only know one language or i i know two languages or it's because i'm short or because i'm tall or because i'm fat or like we'll make up some weird ass excuses to not pursue greatness or be better and that to me is kind of like dang really (laughs) Like if if they're messed up, what the hell am I? <laughs> you know, sometimes it, it kind of takes a kick in the ass going to another country and actually seeing poverty, you know, firsthand to kind of give you that jolt of like, wow, I'm not as worse off in my country than I really am. You know, compared to everything else around me, like that, again. But this this comes with you know you actually doing a little traveling now some might say well i can't travel because i don't have enough money because it's either i travel or i pay my rent well again you have two options you can either look for more work look for a way to make yourself more valuable until you get yourself out of that rut and or you figure out a way to eliminate certain things that are wants instead of needs in your life or you can do the the combo and do both get yourself in a better situation financially um but again that that it takes a a, a quite a bit of uh, willpower strategizing and and people that'll keep you you know accountable to yourself not just yourself you might need a you might need your brother or you might need your sister you might need a parent uh, or some sort of um, tutor or a, a, a mentor a mentor probably that'll keep you you know accountable to, to those situations because it is hard it's not easy but again my my whole thinking is like nothing worth having is going to be easy it's going to get hard. it's going to be hard if, if it's worth having it's going to be hard it's not going to be easy there's nothing worth having it's easy and and people think that that, that because it's easy it's great no well that's the reason why they're saying easy come easy go why because that easy things don't last easy things don't last and you might think oh well, it's gonna be a piece of cake ah. it might be a piece of cake for you or it depends who you ask type of thing <laughs> but yeah that's that's my point of view and i'm sorry i'm rambling bro but yeah, that, no, that's also point of view with yeah. that one. This your your train of thought. Yes, yes, it is. It's your train of thought, and then uh, what you call it? Um, for example, <laughs> you recently had dinner. Um, you, was were, you were telling me you were telling you know you were telling me what it was, but at the same time, you did it with your own hands. It's not like um, you knew exactly what your ingredients were. You know the worth of each ingredient. <laughs> Yes, everything came out to $81 because I already had cost to get the crew. See, there you go. So you were, it's not that you were money pinching, but you knew exactly how much it, it's worth. Oh, yeah. And I can eat like two or three times now instead of just eating once. Because, like, well, going to Shake Shack, and now no shit on Shake Shack. I love Shake Shack. Shake Shack is great. But it cost me about 81 something, you know, with some change, almost 100 bones to get food for a family for um with you know their respective burgers maybe you want an extra sandwich or a burger for yourself four orders of fries no drinks mind you and it's still costing a pretty penny so yeah i am concerned about certain things like that i try to be as uh how how would you call it frugal maybe or just being smart with my money understanding of the value of your time and your what you want to put into your body oh, and yes. what the resources that you have with you I, I love putting food in my body okay. no sus no sussy back about that yeah and i don't know why it just sounds so relaxing you're like i mean just as cooking and cleaning up after you're also respecting 
your your kitchen right now. You're you're cleaning up the, the you know the rules to to have a, a healthy home. You know, putting everything away. Oh yeah, things bro, that I can't God, be God you. I, I remember this in stuff out. Yeah. Serve safe, man. Serve safe. You're doing oh, yeah, exactly bro. that. Temperature danger zones out here, babe. Can't be yeah, I don't know why it, it makes you. It, it, it gives me a smile, man. Like I hear oh, you bro, hustling I'm, and bustling. Man, I'm happy. You're happy, bro. You make me smile. Because, like, oh, did you um, um for example, the chicken? Did you let it cool down, or did you put it right away into the fr- into the refrigerator? Oh, no, I left it out because I was gonna eat it. Okay, okay, there we go. Yeah, but now that I now that I'm gonna put some of the chicken away, uh, yeah, I, I definitely let it cool down, and then I wrapped it up, labeled it, and then um, put it in the fridge. Très magnifique, my brother. Très magnifique. I do the gotta worry about that. Here. <laughs> gotta worry about the danger zone and the double danger zone. Make sure it's not in seventy degrees. Get it out of those forty degrees. Keep it under forty, and you're all set. Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna. And then you yeah. want, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. What's it called? I'm gonna keep it in below sub-zero temperatures. Yeah. And then and then market it. You know, you use by the or made the day that it was made. But it's gonna be eaten for breakfast probably. So you can. Yeah, I think so. Actually, why not? Yeah, I don't know why. Like, again, since I, I, I'm more appreciative. Like me, just listening to you, I, I'm, I'm understanding the situation you're in. Just hustling, but like you're giving it its proper respect for the family and for yourself. Familia, fucking family. Family. <laughs> but yeah, man. Oh, another thing. Um, you know, yes. no, two other stuff. Um, did you hear about the recent thing about the UFO stuff? Do you think it's a, it's a, it's a thing to keep people distracted or the other governments distracted? It might be. Uh, it might be. I wouldn't be surprised if, they, if they're coming out with this type of information closer and closer to, um, I guess, uh, again, I think we were speaking about it. Whether it be like the Hunter Biden laptop or the election or some sort of uh, shenanigans that is, that might be happening uh, in and around or all uh, of the above oh yeah that's a definitely a possibility yeah all I can like know this yeah. uh-huh go ahead this past week like uh, one of the Navy Navy admirals I think like oh he's reporting like a quote unquote detail that things that he can disclose to Congress and to the public like it, it was on C-SPAN right I right. think that he recorded that he um, that he divulged if you will like saying like oh this this is what happened in 2004 we were doing this we were in the Pacific doing this and that uh, and this happened you know this is how it went down and right. the conclusion is that they were saying I wish you know I want to make sure that everything there's proper oversight and reporting that you know even though some people were always like whistleblowing or giving their own personal stories so like on the Joe Rogan podcast or he didn't say that verbatim okay. but he was saying that you know oversight understanding that you know everyone is accountable to the people is very very crucial in my head yes you're right but I wouldn't be it would be dumb of me to not assume that you're using that it's the government using this to you know throw off a the people and B other competing countries like yo oh my god they're doing this what else are you know me as a little pleb you know person over here it's like what's what's the catch what's the catch my guys there's always a catch here am i alive but there's a catch here that's true like what what are your what are your like um Theories, obviously, this is the. What are your um, your thoughts? Like, obviously, they're hiding, st- probably hiding stuff, and they have to hide stuff because you know, even though we're paying for it, they're still worrying about competitive in politics, and it's it's like a movie out there. Movies yeah, wish sure they were is. like this. Well, again, I, I think it's all of the above to a certain degree, and um, maybe they're trying to direct your focus somewhere where it shouldn't be and uh, I think all we can do is keep our eyes peeled 
and keep our our ear to the ground to see what could possibly be the the reason they're trying to obfuscate the the real the real info. I like that word. We'll obfuscate. Yes, sure. And that should um, be the name of the episode. Okay. Obfuscation <laughs> is is in 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 effect. Right. And I, I don't know. I mean, could it be? Could it be that? Uh, you know, they might want to use this as a uh, as a as a way to like kind of excuse themselves of certain things that they might do or they've been doing. You know, for some for, for some time since uh, a lot of information is going to get declassified. I mean, earlier this week we got the uh, the Facebook files, just like we had it with the Twitter files, that are along the lines of like you know really weird stuff going on with Facebook or whatnot. Oh yes, yes. Well, there's that now. Then there's the whole thing in New York. Did you hear about the the big fire that happened in New York City, like the the one with the crane? There was no, one on I the didn't. west side. On the west side, up really? by forty first, forty first and tenth Avenue. Uh, there was like a a crane that was like what, fifty stories high, about forty five stories high, putting a new right. floor on a on a new, on a new building skyscraper. Lifting 16 tons of concrete, you know, as in the, as in the floor. Okay. I don't know what happened. That the engine of the crane caught fire at like 50 stories, you know, up there. And, okay, I think I did hear about this. And it fell over on the highway, but obviously, like according to them, only like five people had like minor injuries. One had like a um, six in total people injured. One with a uh, heavy injury, uh, grave or heavy injuries, no dead, according to them right now. And, and uh, only five wounded. And I'm like, gosh darn it. What, what was going on now? As of the recording right now, on Friday, they said that like, um, the engine was leaking some uh, fluid, some um, oil. I'm going to say oil simpler. I'm not, you know, I don't know. Lube, some oil and that right. caught fire with the heat of the engine. So like, so it wasn't up to standard. What's going on here? Mm, I see, I see. So now there is some saucy stuff going on there. Yeah. Like are, right. are all the all the cranes not up to up to date? What's going on? Like are unfortunately, or not? something bad has to happen in order for the people get their act straight, if you will. Well, and this is, yeah. and it's it's a company. I understand companies are always trying to you know skip save money uh, by avoiding you know if they're not told to do it, they're not going to do it. And you know the consequences speak for themselves. You sure do, buddy. There's that one, and then um another fire in e-bikes departments, uh stores. You know since there's been a lot of e-bikes popping, electrical electric bikes popping all over the place, they've been having different standards of batteries. So I think right now it's New York State, but I think it's gonna go for the rest of the country. Is going to try to standardize um, battery specifications, and they, like a lot of people are for it because you know people have died in their houses, in businesses, in places where their bike or their e-bike uh, fires have started, you know, making money, uh, basically causing a lot of expenses, if you will, to to you know for the damages. And then uh, uh, some people are against it in the sense that, you know, what about all the businesses that are already up hundreds of thousands of dollars in uh, in spending these not up to snuff um, e-bike uh, uh, bike, uh, uh, stores or shops? Like what's going to happen to them? They, they already got, you know, they got their businesses up to the present specs except the batteries because there were none no specifications right. and they're they're up a creek right now they're all like okay what, what about me as a business owner what's going on here and there and uh they don't know what's going to happen with that i mean both sides both sides people are getting hurt and dying because of lack of regulations on batteries and then because of the lack of regulations and batteries a lot of business owners were able to open shops and you know, right. grab some money and make money there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
actually. In following the present regulations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's quite a conundrum. It's it's an economy, it's a business right now, but there's no standardization of the battery. Like everything rotates around that battery. Nobody is talking about the ecological impact of uh, the battery is going to be thrown out, where they're going to be disposed, and all those things. Nobody's asking about that. Obviously, right. if it, it's it's a factor, but nobody's right. asking about that. They're just worried about the expenses they already accrued on opening the business and the expenses of damages that these not up to snuff batteries are creating or potential right. to create. It's money, money, money. The name of the game. And not this case. Yeah, definitely. Marquitos, you think yeah. we can call it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry Thank you, Alan, that, for man. joining. No worries, no worries. Thank no, you, Alan. No, no, I'm sorry. I- I'll definitely make it up to everyone on the on the cast, on the pod, and, and to you for the next recording. No worries. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, dear listeners. Remember to follow us on the social medias down in the links below, on Instagram, Twitter, and on YouTube. Okay? This is Marco signing out. This is Alan signing out. Stay frosty.